what's up my care peeps it is mr boylan back for a thriller of a video in this one we are going to describe three count them one two three common applications of the process of electrolysis <sighs> basically we're going to talk about the electrolysis of water electroplating and electro refining as those three applications of electrolysis okay so again three important applications of electrolysis that you want to be comfortable with the first is the electrolysis of water which is an important way to generate hydrogen gas for use in fuel cells. The second application we're gonna look at is metal plating, also known as electroplating. And the third application of electrolysis, metal extraction from minerals and ores for metal purification. All of these things are very commonly used and things that you wanna be familiar with as applications of electrolysis. Okay, so let's first start with the electrolysis of water. Again, this process is completed to generate hydrogen gas for fuel cells, a relatively clean source of energy. When you apply electrical current to water containing an electrolyte, that electrical energy causes the water to get to decompose into its element parts, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. That hydrogen gas that's generated, again, can then be used as a fuel source in fuel cells. Now, you're given the balanced chemical equation for the reaction. Important to note that relationship between your products, you're always gonna generate twice the amount of hydrogen as oxygen in this electrolysis of water when you split water apart. Now, this is an example of a redox reaction because hydrogen is reduced in the reaction and oxygen is oxidized. The two half reactions in this important application of electrolysis are provided on your screen and in your notes. You're encouraged to spend some time thinking about and getting comfortable with these two half reactions and how they recombine to give you your overall redox reaction for the electrolysis of water. As you look at the images in your notes, again, just driving home a couple of important points. One, we are gonna create twice the volume of hydrogen gas as we do oxygen gas. Okay, the second important application of electrolysis that you wanna be comfortable with is the idea of electroplating. In this process, we plate one metal onto another by hydrolysis. Most commonly, we do this for decorative purposes. Many times we plate a really expensive metal on top of a really cheap metal to save ourselves money or to prevent corrosion of a metal. And so if you are using a cheap metal that corrodes very easily, by coating it in a less reactive metal, you're able to avoid the often very costly effects of corrosion. Now, in electroplating, the object to be plated is the cathode, cations are reduced there, and the anode is made of the plate metal. So as you take a look at the image in your notes and on your screen, here's an example of electrolytic cell that is set up for silver electroplating. Here we have the object that we want to be coated in silver. Here we have our plate metal, in this case silver. We want to plate, or we want to take silver and plate it onto this ring. It's an electrolytic cell, so we have to force this reaction to happen by applying a source of energy. The electrons will flow from that plate metal to the object to be plated. The ions of that plate metal will pick the electrons up and plate onto the surface of that metal, coating or plating it. Again, a really common and important application of electrolytic cells. And then the third common application of electrolysis that you want to be comfortable with is the process of electro refining. This is really commonly used in industry as we mine lots of ores that have metals in it that we want, but in order to make them useful, we have to purify those samples that we mine. And so this is similar to the electroplating process, but your anode is gonna consist of your impure metal. Cathode is gonna be the electrode at which the pure metal will be deposited. And you have, again, an electrolytic solution that contains the cation of the metal to be purified. So as you take a look at the example in your notes, uh, again, this looks really similar to the setup that we saw in the electroplating process. You have an impure sample. Okay, in this case, it's copper mixed with a bunch of other metals, impure. And then you have a pure copper cathode set up as your other electrode. As we run electrical current through this cell, we cause the anode to be oxidized. As the cell continues to run, those impurities essentially fall out of the original sample, and the copper ion then picks up those electrons, plate onto the cathode as a pure copper sample. All right, and that does it for this vid. As always, take a moment to check out the info beneath the vid. Have a fantastic day.